There are many ways to customize JSON data that is returned in a Rails application. You can override the asJSON method in a model, or use the JBuilder gem like I showed you last week. Another popular solution is the Rabble gem, and that stands for Ruby API Builder Language. It's a little more feature complete than some of the other solutions, so let me show you how it works in this episode. Now I'll be using the same example application that I used with JBuilder, so that way you can get a better idea of the differences between the two libraries. I have a blogging application here which has many articles. When I go to a given article, I want to be able to fetch a JSON representation of this article by appending the uh, JSON extension in the URL. Now currently I get a template missing error because our Rails app doesn't know how to respond to a JSON request. Now I could go into the controller and make sure that a controller action responds to JSON and just convert the model directly to JSON, but here let me show you how to do this using the Ravel gem. First I'll go into my gem file of my application and then add the Ravel gem to the bottom here, and then make sure to run the bundle command to install it. Now much like JBuilder, Ravel includes a template handler so I can define the JSON in the view layer. So under the articles view, let me make a show file here respond to the show action in the JSON format, I'll use Rabble as the extension here. So we can use Ruby code in here to define the JSON response using Rabble's unique DSL. Well, usually the first call is to object, and then you pass in the object you want to focus on, in this case, the article instance. And then you can call attributes to define which attributes you want in the JSON, such as our ID, the name, and maybe the published at uh, date time column. Now let's try this out. You'll need to restart the Rails app after installing the Rabble gem, but once you do and hit reload here, then we get the JSON response for this article given the attributes that we specified. Now whenever you need to specify something that isn't a simple attribute on the model, you can use the node method and then pass in a name such as edit URL and then a block and have that return whatever data you want. And then hit reload here and then notice we have this edit URL attribute with that value. Now we have access to helper methods from inside of here so we could say only show this if the current user is an admin. And we can also use the edit article URL instead of here and pass in that article. Now there is an issue with this though, and notice I'm using the article instance variable here, which really isn't a good practice. Instead, it's best to use the article object that's going to be passed into this block. And so this is going to be the same object that's defined up here, but there's a reason why you should use the object that's passed into the block, and I'll explain more why later on in this episode. And you can see if I reload the page, that works. We get the article URL, yay. Now what if you want to include data on associated records? For example, article belongs to an author and has many comments. Well, you can use the child method in here and pass in the name of the association, such as author, and then a block. And then you can use the attributes method inside of here like you did earlier, and then pass in whatever values you want to include for about that specific author. And you can also use the node method just like before, and but this time the actual author instance is going to be passed into the block, not the article. So we can say uh, the author URL is for that author. And that's because inside of this block, the object that's currently scoped and focused on is the author that the record is associated with. And you can see when I reload the page here, I get the details about that author that I specified, just like I expect. Now the same can be done for the comments association. Article has many comments, so I can call child comments and then pass in whatever attributes again that I want inside of here to include. And now because article has many comments, it's going to nest the comments inside of an array like this and not just display a single record like it did with author. So now that the JSON data is nicely defined for this article, what if we need to use this output somewhere else in our application? For example, in our articles controller, in the index action here, what if we want this to respond to JSON and use that same JSON output, but for all of the articles? Well, this is where I think Rabble really shines. All we have to do is create a new Rabble template for this index action. So it's called index.json.rabble. Now, instead of calling object here, since we're working with multiple articles, call collection, and then pass in all the collections into that. And if you want to, you can define what attributes to use for each of the articles and the JSON output, but what if you want to duplicate the attributes you used inside of the show action? Well, it's as simple as calling extends and then passing in the template to the show action, in this case, article slash show, and then it will use that Ravel template for each of the articles inside the collection. 
And you can see that instead of displaying a single article there, if I call articles.json, it'll return the JSON output for all the articles, but using that same show template. So this is why it's important to minimize the use of instance variables inside of the Ravel template. Uh, in our show action, since we're only using the instance variable up here at the top when we're defining the object, it's very easy to override this with defining the collection in the index action and then using the same template because we're using the article that's passed into the block here instead of the instance variable inside of this action. So that way this will apply to each article in the collection instead of always this single article. Now one thing you may notice about the JSON that Ravel outputs is that it includes this model name as the root node inside the JSON. Now sometimes you may want this, sometimes you don't. Uh, in Rails 3.1, the default JSON output was to not include the root element, so if you want this to match the latest version of Rails, you'll need to configure Ravel to do that. Now you can do this by creating a new file in the config initializers directory. I'll make a new file in here called uh, Ravel uh, config.rb. And in here, define the Ravel configure block, passes in the config object, and then set the uh, include JSON root attribute uh, to false here. So that way it won't include that. And then with a quick restart of the Rails application and then reload this page here, you can see it no longer includes the model name as the uh, root node in the JSON output. Now there are many more options that you can pass into the Ravel configuration. Check out the README for the full documentation on that. And also there are other features of Ravel that I didn't cover here. There are other serializations that are supported such as XML and message pack. So you may want to read the documentation on that if you're interested. I want to finish off with this. Sometimes you need to embed JSON data inside of an HTML document instead of calling a separate controller action. So how do you do that with something like Ravel? For example, here's the HTML template for that list of articles page that we were on. And let's say I want to include uh, the JSON output for the articles inside this div here, maybe inside of a data attribute. How do I include the JSON inside of here? Well, I could call articles.toJSON, but that's not going to use the Ravel template. Instead, I can just call a render template and pass in the path to article slash index json .rabble to render that template directly in line here. And then when I reload the page and view the source, you can see there's that JSON output directly in line instead of doing it through a separate request. Now, if you use this technique, it's important that any instance variables used inside of the render template, such as the articles here, are set in that controller action. So just keep that in mind. Well, that's it for this episode on Rabble. It's a really great way to build up a JSON response. But how does it compare to alternatives such as JBuilder? Well, I really like the DSL that Rabble provides, and it has many more features. But I also like the simplicity that JBuilder offers. If you view the source code, uh, the JBuilder code is a lot smaller and simpler. So really it's a weighing whether you like the fuller solution with many more features or just a smaller, simpler one. So hopefully that gives you some idea of which one to go with, and you may want to check out some of the other alternatives as well. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. The pro episode this week is one of the most frequently requested topics, Backbone.js. In the first part of this two-part series, I show you the basics of Backbone.js through building the starting of this raffling application, which selects random winners. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.